Hi, it's Kelly here, and I've got some profound stories to tell you. Um, and I know it's been a while, but now it's now. <laughs> so I've got some profound stories to tell you. For the first one is that uh, I almost forgot. This is an anniversary for when I cured my cancer, which was in 1998, stage 4 cancer. And here we are in 2024, so that would make it... What is that? 26 years of defeating cancer, doing it in two weeks without much fuss at all. Um, and uh, that's number one. That's pretty profound. So that's that's profound story number one. Uh, the second one would be uh, how I was living in, in Panama City when Hurricane Michael hit, which was a Category 5, and my neighbors had been a roofer, and he said that our roofs would not withstand a Category 3, so he believed that a Category 2 would be the most that it could handle, and it, with a Category 5, uh, our roofs stayed on for the entire block. There were two other apartment complexes that had the same kind of roofs as we had, and they had 100% eviction rates. We had zero eviction rates. That's kind of profound. And it's based on the one of my inventions, or two of my inventions. Um, and by the way, prior to those inventions, I should tell you that uh, you know I'm the author of this book over here, or <laughs> and this book. Well, that's the book in Russian, they tell me. Same book as this, The Doctor Who Cures Cancer. And if you put your, your screen on full screen, you'll see that, that uh, the book right behind me is entitled, Is There a Question That Heals Instantly? And I would submit to you that each one of those books are profound. I should have become a millionaire uh, with The Doctor Who Cures Cancer, but that didn't happen. Um, that's, that's a long, sad story, um, or a short, sad story, one or the other. And uh, I was also the founder of, co-founder of Sinus Magic, which is a really profound uh, product for, for uh, sinuses, sinus issues. Um, that should have made me a multimillionaire as well. Uh, but the business was stolen from me. I don't know if they still make it or not. The, the doctor that I was partners with uh, probably fled the country. Um, so he probably went back to Iran, er, Iraq, excuse me. But anyway, uh, so there was that. Uh, I'm also the founder of, of Whirling Whirling Bliss, which was a company, and that you know, I'm just not very good at business, and it's a profound product. But I give away all the information about all these things for free now, so that didn't make me into a multi-millionaire or billionaire either. Um, so there's been a lot of a lot of things that you know, if someone else had been doing it, it maybe it would have turned out differently for them. Um, I suspect, and this is going to sound kind of a different idea, but it, my back injury, and the metal with and with the metal rod there, you know, the back was broken, bars bone. From the navel down to the groin area is off by t by two inches. Now, for those of you who who understand chakras, those are the areas. Where, that are important for for you know financial success so like the second chakra is creativity etc 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 and so although I am creative the follow through isn't there and I, I just wonder if somehow that has been a part of this and maybe not maybe not but it's just a thought that's crossed my mind that how could somebody who has so many freaking amazing uh, contributions to society 
would be living hand to mouth. You know? <laughs> yeah. I mean, I mean, you know, there's not that many people that have a way to cure cancer in two weeks, right? Not many people who could write a book like this and have it called the, you know, by some of the reviews at least, or a couple of reviews, the best book in this category by far. Um, it was also the number one mover and shaker out of about 10 million titles on Amazon. Uh, so anyway, that's just the beginning of the profound things, you know. The fact that that uh, I was able to save the neighborhood from losing their roofs when the destruction from Michael was just, I mean, amazing. I mean, like I say, everybody in the other apartment complexes, no roofs. Everybody got soaked, and that's the way it would have been, except for what I've come up with. Had come up with. Now we'll go a little further. During that during that storm, I was helping, or after the storm, I was helping a family, and we were riding around in the car, uh, looking. The, the gentleman he had he had cancer, and we were he was needing pain medication, and so I was trying to find a doctor's office or a hospital that was open that could assist him to get the pain medication that he needed. And we went here, there, and everywhere, and uh, I think he got a little bit from one place, and that was about it. But in any case, one of the chil his children, eight years old, had autism. And he was sitting behind me in the car, and he started kicking the seat, and he started going nuts, so to speak, as eight, you know, any eight-year-old child can do, you know. And so I turned around with, with uh, the Whirling Bliss machine. These are a couple of examples of them here. Started spinning it, and within a couple of seconds, he calmed down. And his mother was flabbergasted because she said that normally when he started behaving the way that he was, he would have a complete meltdown. That, you know, it would have gotten far worse. But it stopped. So that's pretty profound. And it would be... And what's even more profound to me is the fact that I've shared all this information with people. This should have, by now, because that was what, eight, was that six years ago? Yeah, six years ago. <clears throat> In six years, just about every person, every family, every household that has autism should be aware of this and the remedy that's involved in, in helping their child. Since then, we've put the things on fans so they can run 24-7. Um, the one the drawback with this, if a child has autism, depending how bad it is, you know, any child, something like that can get lost, and if a child has autism, it's, you know, it's even more challenging for them to keep track of stuff. <clears throat> so, we should have eliminated autism in this world, uh, or, or at least, the severe, I shouldn't say eliminated, but we should have greatly brought down the challenges from autism. And I've seen the writings of people on, on forums who have autism, and they say it's a living hell in their brain. Some of them say that. Some are happy with being autistic. Um, however, there's enough of them who, don't, who are not happy with it, and they say it's a living hell. So we could, have, we could eliminate that, or at least greatly reduce it to almost nothing. We could have done it in the last six years, and it hasn't happened. Um, now we go fast forward. I'm visiting a lady who's 98 years old in a nursing home. She's, uh, got, she's got senility of some sort, uh, dementia, and she could not care you know, make one or two sentences make sense. You know, they would not, you, you couldn't follow what she was talking about. So I, I had one on, on a, a little battery powered one up with me. We were sitting at a table in a conference room or, or whatever, a visiting room. And I was holding it under the table where she couldn't see it. 
and I had it running. And we have, there were three of us there. We talked with her. She talked for about two hours. And she spoke coherently until the very end when she got, I would say she got tired. There was one exception to that, and that's when I had to replace the battery in the, in the little uh, portable fan that I had with me. And when that happened, she became incoherent. That's very profound, <clears throat> because how many families have, have a relative, a parent, living with them, and, and, it's, and they have to take care of them and watch them all the time, and they're not coherent. There's a lot of that. And this happened, she was 98, she's 103 now, five years ago. Five years ago. So this issue should have been resolved for almost every family in the country by now. And it hasn't happened. So that's even more profound to me. How is it possible that something as profound as this for people who have autism and people who have dementia that it isn't known by everyone. That's profound. It's striking that that hasn't happened. What's also striking is that here I am, an inventor of profound things that help people in ways that nothing else can do. And I'm the author of this book and that book. And yet when I write to and contact the people, you know, you, you've probably received emails if you're, you know, if you're into this sort of thing, you know, of conferences that you can subscribe to online. They might be free and then there's, and if you want a copy of it, you can pay $47 or $197, whatever they're charging, to watch, you know, if you want to have a copy of it for f future reference. I've never been invited to be a guest on any of them. Never. I've written to all sorts of people. Finally gave up. I've asked people to contact these people so that, you know, so they would get it from a, th a third party that I should be part of that. And I reach out to them. You know, I'll reach out to the, to the people who are running the show. Not a word. Not a word from any of them. Um, now there was another another case where a gentleman, he was smoking, he was a heavy smoker, he, he was staying with his girlfriend up here in, in the neighborhood, and I saw him literally double over in pain. He had, had, he had been having chest pain, undiagnosed, but I saw him literally just suddenly just double over with this pain in his lungs. So I invited him up, and I put him between two of the heartfelt energizers. And as soon as I did that, he looked at me like, and he said, what is that? And I distracted him because I didn't, wasn't sure if I could explain it to him. You know, I was afraid that he might mentally block what was going on. So we talked for about 10 minutes. And at, at the end of the 10 minutes, I said to him, I said, could you share, you know, tell me what, what was your pain level when you came in? He said, an eight. I said, what is it now? He said, zero. Well, shortly after that, he got kicked out of, out of the, the apartment complex, wasn't allowed to be here. And, uh, but I did see him picking up the, the gal, and he was driving his truck, and I recognized the truck. I didn't recognize him. So, but I saw him at the stop sign. I was able to get over to him. And I didn't recognize him when I looked at him because he looked so healthy. And I said, how are you doing? And he said, fantastic. And then he drove off. <laughs> Story of my life, right? And, you know, <laughs> that was it. So um, there are other examples. People write to me and tell me how, how uh, their, I think it was a father-in-law 
had a farm, blueberry farm, they had so many blueberries growing that the, the broker wanted to give him a low price because he had so much. Well, the farmer knew better. He knew that his crops were growing, and he knew it wasn't that it wasn't a worldwide, you know, it wasn't a area-wide thing uh, that his blueberries were growing because of the heartfelt energizers that he had running, or she had running nearby. That's pretty profound, you know. When we talk about the food shortages and possible food shortages that we have, what if we could, you know, have have bumper crops all the time, everywhere? That's very profound. And what's more profound is, it, is that this hasn't become known nationwide. Um, there are other examples, I'm not thinking of them right now, that are equally profound to the ones that I've just told you. And yet it hasn't happened. In my videos, meanwhile, uh, like recently, uh, the last few videos have gotten maybe 200 views. It doesn't mean the person watched it all the way through. It just means that they turned it on uh, to watch however much that they watch. Um, and there are people, but Mr. Beast, he's the number one video maker. I think he's got, I don't know, 150 million subscribers. I've got a little over 5,000. Uh, but even if it, you know, we don't want to talk about the gar gargantuan numbers, I'm sure there are other people that you know of, you know, uh, who have done some great work, you know, Dr. De uh, uh, not De Silva, but uh, the fellow who was on The Secret, the, the chiropractor who uh, helps people with getting heart-brain coherence, and there are others that do that. And they have big followings. And I would submit to you that the things that I have to offer are as big, if not bigger, than what they offer. And it's so much easier. You don't have to, you don't have to learn it. It just happens. And so that's pretty profound. It's not that it isn't worthwhile to learn the technique. It probably is valuable to do that. But it isn't necessary. So very, very profound. And yet, we're, here we are. There are, as I've, I think I mentioned, I did mention in one video, I was told there are about a thousand of the Hartfeld Energizer multi-wave oscillator discs, the bigger, bigger ones, probably a combination of the, of the 8 inch and the 12 inch discs that have been purchased uh, from, from Philip in Slovenia and about 10,000 of these small ones, the four inch discs. And so a good number of those, probably a, a most of them are spinning, which is really, really great. I mean, why isn't it a million? Why isn't it 10 million? It's pretty profound that it's not 10 million. Um, so I just wanted to give you this update you're wondering why I haven't been here, uh, something happened that caused me to be traumatized. It was my own behavior, and it's pretty subtle, and I don't want to get into it because it's, you know, I'm, I'm trying to fix it. But as a result of that, I lost my creativity for about three weeks. It's been about three weeks now. And, um, You know, it's starting to come back a little bit, not that much. I sure would like to see uh, with these profound things that we that more people find out about it. And the ways that you can do that is to subscribe. You can share it. Um, you can buy a bunch of them. You can tell your neighbors, you can tell your friends, tell them everybody. Let's make this happen. Uh, whatever level it is that's happening right now, it's not enough. I mean, we it should be pretty obvious the state that we're in. We've had two attempted assassinations on the president. And I can tell you that it's impossible for those to have been accidental 
uh, failures of the Secret Service. Just for example, in the latest one, they could tell by by the cell phone of uh, whatever his name is, Ralph, Randy Ralph, Ralph I'm not sure the first name, um, that he was in that, he was, he was there for like 12 hours along the fence. So it's impossible that the Secret Service in the 12 hours beforehand didn't find him along the fence. How is that possible? There should be someone watching that fence all the time. It wasn't a mistake. It wasn't a failing. It's intentional. So this is a situation we have. Our government is trying to assassinate former President Trump. Now, the way that we can fix that is that we don't have control over the Secret Service. But if we run these heartfelt energizers and put these units on our ceiling fans, the, the, the twisted copper wire, we, we are creating an environment where people are no longer afraid because they feel, they feel confident and vibrant. And, and when that happens, more and more whistleblowers come forward and more and more information is released and we will get to the bottom of this and the, and the, and the people who are attempting to turn this world into a worldwide, what we call it, despotism, um, worldwide tyranny of the few, we can stop that. We can turn this world into to, uh, gardens of Eden everywhere where everybody feels uplifted, everybody feels energized, everybody feels happy. And with my book, is there a question that heals instantly? It isn't just working on the physical level, we're taking care of the spiritual level without, without having to talk to the person about what they believe in, who they believe in. They will find God on their own terms by doing this question, is there a question that heals instantly? You know, if, it's surprising to me that we haven't had 100 people giving out 100 copies each. It hasn't happened. It should have happened. It should be, you know, maybe one person could get get a thousand copies and, and give them out. Get things rolling, because we never know the next step that we take can make it happen. But there's no excuse after six years that th this information isn't common knowledge. Um, I'm a human being, just like everybody else, and I have, you know, desires and my my mission in life is to make is is to help create these gardens of Eden around the world a golden age where people feel good and they and they come from their hearts um, and you know I'm not seeing it happen we're making some little progress I think that if we had done what we've done, some of these things wouldn't have been exposed at such a rapid rate. So with that much we've accomplished. Um, oh, I can tell you this profound thing, and you can take it or leave it. You know, I already told you about Hurricane Michael, but you know the hurricanes of recently, the ones that I focus on, they have almost no tor confirmed tornadoes. And there was one, I think it was uh, Adalia, that went up the coast, went up through Florida, all the way to South Carolina, North Carolina. Four states, they said it was ideal for a maximum number of tornadoes, and there were only three, maybe four, confirmed tornadoes in all four states combined. That's pretty profound. Going back several years, five, about five years ago, the Hurricane Dorian, you may not remember that one, but it was coming at 185 miles, it was going 185 miles an hour. 
which I've never heard of before. And it got stuck on one of the islands. And that was at the time when my fan broke down. When my fans broke down, I didn't have as many then. And it just stayed on that island. And it was, it was just destroying that island. I think it was the Bahamas. It's the one, it's the one closest to, close to Florida. Not the other one. It was Bermuda, the one that's far away, I believe. Uh, anyway, so I, I went to I went and got another fan a fan to put the put the disc on, and and then I actually held the little one in my hand, pointing it, because that's all I had. I really I only had about four of them going at that time, and that little that it immediately when I got the the the, the new fan. It went from a, you know, a, a tight eye. It went, phew, opened up, and that jitterbug. It kept going back and forth, back and forth, and it only touched one outer uh, island of the United States. I think in North Carolina, somewhere along that, along there. Instead of coming across, it was either going to come across at 185 miles an hour, through, through Florida, so it would have hit, maybe above Fort Lauderdale, and into. Uh, uh, not Fort Myers, but above that, uh, Tampa Bay, all of that, maybe Orlando, and then gone. They said it was going to go up to Mobile, Alabama, probably. So we would have had a, a level of destruction at 185 miles an hour, unlike anything we've ever seen. The other possibility was it was going to come into Florida, going up along the coast from above Fort Lauderdale, you know, up through all the cities that along there at 185 miles an hour including Jacksonville and along you know and up through Savannah and you know a bunch of cities that would have been destroyed I don't know if the United States would have recovered from that because it was so so devastating in so many cities but we stopped it it was profound so you can believe that or not if whatever but the, we know the history of the storm it did turn and everybody talked about it it was going to go one of two directions so you can believe it was a coincidence that it changed direction and, and <clears throat> that's fine with me or you can understand what i was doing uh, and, and, and think about it in terms of the tornadoes that also have disappeared that maybe there is something to this so um, what are we going to do? Are we going to make this happen? I would like it. I would like that. I think you would too. And, and uh, you know, you'll be earning a lot of grace points with God. And in your heart, you'll just feel so complete in that you've done that. That you've made help to make this world into a Garden of Eden once again. Will you take care and God bless.